Good morning. Good morning, getting started. Outside, hope y'all are enjoying the sound of the cicadas in the background. Here we go. All right. Hi everybody, thank you for joining. Um, I started a couple minutes after 9.30 this morning. I normally start like right on the dot at 9.30 and I decided that um, and it always cuts me off after 59 minutes, not 60. And so um, I'm trying it a little bit of a different way today. Um, let's see. How is everybody doing today? Send me some emojis or some words. You having happy Saturday mornings, I hope. We are gonna be looking at some beautiful succulents this morning. And hey, Milton, good morning, thank you. I hope y'all have um, whatever beverage you need, your coffee, your tea, your Saturday morning ritual. Hey, Whitney, good morning. Happy you're here. I will show y'all the succulents we're gonna be doing. Let's see this precious little thing right here. Um, Echeveria, I believe is how you pronounce that. I think I'm, I'm not a succulent expert. Um, my dad likes to grow cacti and also has succulents. And things like that are really interesting plants and different from what we normally do in botanical. Um, in that, the way that they um, propagate, the way they, they procreate, <laughs> the way they make more of themselves um, is, is really cool. Um, they basically just kind of right there in the soil, just pop up little new babies called, called pups, little baby things, um, or, or, or chicks, however, however you want to, what you want to call them. Um, And they're so tiny and precious. It's a little windy out this morning. I decided on, or I've debated on doing botanical inside, even though it's called backyard botanical. And I decided we would still be outside because there's a nice breeze, but that can also work against me. So hopefully um, once we get going, we'll have some smooth sailing. I hope everybody's having a great morning. I'm glad you're all here. Um, I am going to get started drawing and then painting. I'm using a different paper today. And I wanted to tell you about that before I got going. <laughs> That's right, Milton. <laughs> Plants are very special. Um, I am using a heavier weight paper today. I normally work with a 90 pound watercolor paper, which is pretty lightweight. Um, and I am using a 140 pound today. And can you even hear that? Like it, it's got a good sturdiness to it, a good structure. Um, I'm also working on a, with a cold press today. So the texture of it is a little bit different. Um, I'm not sure I like the texture so much, but I like the, I like the weight. And I'm also not going to be doing tape all the way um, around my picture today like I normally do. You know, I normally tape off all the edges. Um, today, with the succulent that I'm doing, um, painting, drawing and painting, um, I am not going to be covering the whole paper. And so I'm just going to tape my paper down. Um, I'll show you what I mean. Let's see. I'm holding the phone. <laughs> so 
So I'm trying to do this. There we go. So I'm just gonna make loops like you would do if you were um, just wanting something to stay in place, basically. All right, so making loops, sticking it on the back of my paper in a couple different places just to keep it in place. Like I said, it's pretty windy out here. Um, and even if I didn't, w even without the wind, I would tape it down um, on the back if I'm not doing like a ton of water on the paper just to keep it from sliding around while I'm trying to paint on it. It's just a helpful tip, especially when you're working with young students too. It's always a great idea to tape down students' papers on the back so it doesn't move while they're trying to paint. All right, good morning, Angie. See you on there. How are you today? Thank you to everybody who's here. We're gonna get going in just a second. Hmm, are you considering how you are, Angie? You're not sure? <laughs> All right. All right, so I've got my few different places on the back, just some blue tape loops, pressing my paper down. All right. All right, and I'm gonna put y'all in place now. <laughs> I hear Flora calling for me from inside. Hi, baby. <laughs> she needs to show me something. <laughs> okay. That's my two-year-old, almost three-year-old. She'll be three in September. All right, so here we go. Getting y'all on the holder. That's pretty good. Let's see. Do, 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 do. See if I can't zoom in just a little bit. that makes a difference. Hold on one second. Whoops. <laughs> that was the yard. This is a fun morning. All right. I'm going to try putting the phone in a different way and see if that helps with the sound. Hopefully it works. All right. I think that should be better, Milton. 
Let me know how that sounds. All right. Okay, great. Thanks, guys. Thank you for your support and love. Thank you very much, Cheryl3924. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to assume maybe your name is Shirley. So thank you, Shirley. That's very kind of you to say. I appreciate it. All right, I'll zoom in just a little bit more. And let's get drawing. All right. So I'm working um, in the center of my paper pretty much. And like I said, I'm going to be drawing this cute little guy right here. If you're drawing along at home and you um, would prefer to do something else that you see here, if you don't have your own succulents, go right ahead. Um, so I'm pretty much looking at it from the same angle you are. I'm getting pretty close to the paper and looking mostly like right from an aerial view directly above. So you should be seeing pretty much exactly what I was saying. Slightly angled. So we're just going to break this down the same way we always do. Um, really simple lines and shapes. Don't try to get too worked up on it being perfect. This is just the pencil part. Um, and what we're going to focus on is trying to get size and perspective accuracy. So obviously, um, meaning the idea of, even though I know the full shape of like this one, it is partially blocked behind this one because this one's closer to me, right? So the way that it's growing. So I'm not going to draw all of this one. All right, so let's get started. I'll show you what I mean. So these are really nice little curved kind of shapes. I'm going to start right here in the middle. And just a simple line comes up, down. I'm draw a little bit heavier than I normally do, so hopefully you can see it. I'm looking at mine. Let me know if you can or not. I might have to zoom in a little bit more. All right, let me get going. This one comes behind him. It's coming like this. They're overlapping. And then this guy here, I'm seeing him come this way and up and over. So he's coming over that one a little bit. I think I might need to zoom in a little bit more for y'all in order for you to see. Let me try to do that. There we go. That should help. That should help. All right. If, you were, if you're wondering why you couldn't see it, it's because I needed to zoom in a little more. There's kind of a glare on my paper, so that should have helped. All right. So before I add any um, watercolor paints, I'm gonna go back and kind of erase these areas that I don't wanna see anymore. And I'm drawing a little bit heavier handed than I normally would. I don't have my regular drawing pencils, so I'm just using a mechanical pencil, um, but it's the same uh, lead as your typical um, number two pencil, um, which would be kind of like um, in the HB range. So it's not, not as light as I would prefer um, and normally when I'm drawing with y'all as you know I like to draw with a very soft lead pencil so that it's really dark so I still don't have to push hard um, but anyway we're just here for fun right to have some fun making art and to relax uh, I think we might all need it sometimes right I know I do <laughs> need to relax Right now, you might be like, I don't know, Laura. <laughs> Trust me. So I'm just taking each of these little guys one by one. And... Does anybody have any succulents at home? I would love to hear about it if I actually have somebody watching who is a succulent grower. They're really cool. Um, similar to cactus in the sense that they don't need a lot of water. They hold a lot of water in them once they have it. And
they can go a long time without water. In fact, they prefer to go a long time without water. You want to wait until their soil is bone dry before you give them any more water. If you give them too much, they will get, you know, root rot or get real, real sad real fast. So basically, like I said, I'm just taking the, each little part one at a time looking at the angle that I'm seeing it from because they're all turned slightly different so they're not going to look the same. Each one is going to be a little bit different. And making sure like if I'm seeing more of the outside part as opposed to the inner part like these I'm seeing the inside so I see the full the full shape. But like these guys here I'm seeing more of their outside part which looks more rounded. So it's trying to make sure I capture those lines right. one more right in here that I want to get. He's right like that. And he scoops down. Alright, and then that coming this way. They're getting a little longer on the outside here. Inside they're, they're newer and so they're smaller. And as they come out, they are getting longer and have um, a little bit of a wider curve to them. So I want to make sure I represent that in my drawing. I'm also trying to make sure that I get that curve accurate of the underside of it. That's what I just did here. So this one's coming out from under the plant and then curving up. And then I'm seeing the outer, the back part of it here. And then this one, it's flatter. So I'm not seeing as much of the back side. So I'm just gonna do a tiny little bit of an extra part here that comes kind of like this. So Whitney, I'm so glad that your precious succulent at the office is still green and happy. First time you've checked on it since March, which goes to, to prove what, what we were just talking about, right? The idea that they don't need a lot of attention or water. And in fact, the less they get, the happier they're going to be. Um, and Milton, I'm glad, you've, I'm glad you're learning about plants. That makes me happy. I will say, I think the rage for succulents has kind of been like a trend. People really have kind of picked up on liking them more over the past, I don't know, five years or so. I feel like I've got a lot of friends who do succulents because they're so easy to care for. Um, I grew up with a lot of cacti and succulents around because my dad got a love for those particular types of plants from his mom. Um, but he has better success with cactus um, growing around here and the difference between a, a, a succulent or a cactus um, is pretty simply the idea of those prickly thorns that you that you think of um, with a with a cactus they thrive kind of in the same environment um, they don't like a lot of water yeah All right, how are we doing over here? And a really cool thing about growing um, cacti um, or succulents, like I told you earlier, like you'll just, especially with cactus, you'll see little new babies just kind of pop up around the base of them, little pups. Um, actually, see if there are some growing, I can show you. I'm getting distracted by talking about plants, y'all. Surprise, surprise. Do you see this little tiny thing down here? Can you see that? Let me make sure I'm watching to make sure you can see what I see. Hmm. Maybe you can't see it. Right there, there's a new little one that's just growing up out of the soil. Didn't really have to do anything for it. There it is. Oh, they just, they're just so happy and cute. <laughs> All right. I don't think you could tell where my finger was pointing, 
but I think you could see the little green guy. Let's see. Get you back on there. That's where I had you. One more over here. And this guy here. And this guy here. And we are almost done drawing. Or I'm almost done. Have to find out what you're doing at home. All right, so it's a little one. It's not um not as big as we might normally be doing. Ooh, the glare has gotten bad. Let's see. Hold on. Let me help that glare out. I can zoom you in. What's going on? There we go. Sorry for that, y'all. My phone is being wonky today. So I'm gonna go through now and erase the extra pencil marks that I don't want on there. Somehow I've gotten you off of the image, so I'm trying to fix it. Hang in there with me. It's a little better. Why don't I move the image to you? How about that? I think I need to move it this way just a little bit. Does that help? Always a guessing game when you're going from this angle. Nope, that took it more off of camera. I need it to be more on camera. We are about to start painting. <laughs> what have I done? I had such a great angle. Okay, hopefully that fixes it. I'm just kind of going through and erasing some of the messier. Nope, now it's completely off. Sorry, y'all. Why is it doing that? Okay, you're down there. There we go. Is that going to be better? That should be better, I hope. Okay. I don't know about where y'all are, but the wind is blowing here big time, which is very nice. It's a nice break from the stale, humid air. All right, we got our picture recovered with the camera. And now we get to have some fun painting. succulents are really pretty, um, particular the, particularly these ones. You can kind of play with the color. Um, they, they have like a velvety look to them, um, even though the actual texture is kind of waxy, um, which is why I think people have so much fun painting them because of the artistic license that is there. And if you've joined me before, you know that I do try to be accurate because this is a botanical art, um, not really class necessarily, but program. So we're talking about plants and trying to be accurate. But at the same time, I do think it's a lot of fun to just enjoy playing with colors. Um, and what I do when I'm playing with my colors is I still try to get the idea of... Um, highlights and shadows accurate. So even if my color is totally wonky, like if I painted this whole thing blue, um, I would make sure that I had the darker shade of blue, you know, underneath where it needs to be, where the light's not hitting, and lighter blues um, where the light is hitting. So I'm just going to play with a variety of colors for fun and show you how this, um, how this paper works. I'm using a really small brush. And I'm gonna start in the middle here. I'm gonna do a wet on wet technique. 
So that means I'm gonna get my paper wet first and then add the water in, add the water, add the uh, watercolor paint in. And I don't want it to be too wet. So I'm taking a little bit back. All right. And I think I'm gonna start with, cause it should be kind of it's a little bit darker in there, right? Cause it's kind of closed up. I think I'm gonna start with like a purplish, a deep purple blue. You can paint yours any color you want, right? Don't have to do what I'm doing. Um, the purple that I'm gonna be using, I created um, with a, it might be too dark, or I just have too much paint, let's see. Let me wipe a little bit off on my, there we go. Great trick with watercolors, if it's too heavy, you can always just dab it a little bit and it will come right off. When I say dab, I mean on your paper towel. I love that color. Um, I created this purple with a Prussian blue and um, a really fun pink color that's actually the Target brand of watercolors. Um, and it's called Flamingo, but it's such a nice kind of violet purple that they make. So I'm just using, again, the idea of where shades and tints might be. And down here in the center, it's a little bit darker because not as much light is getting in there because it's closed up. Yeah, <laughs> Angie, you hear those cicadas? <laughs> they are very pronounced around here. <laughs> what I'm doing now, y'all, is just using a clean brush that I rinsed off and then dried a little bit. And I'm using that to kind of blend in these areas that I've done without adding any more color. I'm essentially taking a little bit of color away. Look at this guy. I've got a lot of water on there, so I might try to take some off before I start. And again, whenever I say I'm taking some water off or some color off, what I'm doing is just damp dampening, dampening, dabbing my brush on the paper towel. And then that soaks it back up into my bristles. All right, let's make this one um, green. Yeah, that'll be fun. And like I said, again, I just like to have fun with color, especially with these succulents. So this green is really, really pretty. Um, it's, and it's another one of these Target brand uh, colors. And it is called Emerald. Got a little there, let me pick that up. Side of him so he's actually pretty light so I do not want it to be too dark and I definitely want it to have this lighter area in the center to give the idea of it being kind of rounded I like that gosh that color is pretty Yeah, my, uh, my neighbor's leaf blower, whenever that was, was pretty horrendous. I went back and watched the recording and I was like, oh, that was really bad. So I apologize for that, y'all. <laughs> but yes, the cicadas are much more um, enchanting. All right, I'm gonna do a light blue on the next one. And that is way too much water. So I'm going to dry off my brush and just pick it back up. Say, no, 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 no. Too much, too much. Okay. I'm gonna let that dry and I might come back and add some more darker areas to it. But right now I like that color and I wanna just get that laid down before I add anything else. So I'm going to work more on these. Again, these are going to be, they're a little more tucked in in here. So it's going to be a little bit darker. Let's 
Um, I've gone from working wet on wet to now working wet on dry. So I've got water on my brush and color on my brush, but I'm working on dry paper. You can see the difference in the kind of control that you have. It doesn't spread out the same. Um, and either way is really pretty. It just depends on the kind of effect you want. And so I've cleaned my brush off and then dried it off just a little bit. And I'm gonna go back again and just kind of pick up some of this color and spread it out. There we go, that's nice. So this is the Prussian blue again. One of, mm, I, I, I don't wanna say it's absolutely my favorite blue, but I would say it's probably like, basically my, basically my favorite blue to paint with. So pretty. All right, we are, let's put some more pinky reds in there. That's what we need. Okay. I want to soften that up just a little bit. It's a little dark or bright, bold. <laughs> there we go. with colors. Oops. Looks like it dropped in the middle of my green. I didn't want to do that. It's going to make a little bit of a water spot. i try to blend it out. Hopefully it doesn't. Everybody makes little mistakes. You just got to roll with them. Have fun. All right. The more I'm looking at the middle, I feel like I want it to be a darker purple. So I am... Mixing that up really fast. And I just want it to be a little darker right in there. Right there. Nice. All right. Keep going. kind of blue over here. These guys are laid out a little more, so they're gonna have a softer look to them, a little lighter, because they're catching more light. They're not as shadowy. something kind of fun y'all bear with me I was gonna do mostly cool colors but I think I might try to make that blue um, pop a little bit and do an orange on the underside so blue and orange are complementary colors because they're opposite on the color wheel let's just see how this looks Fun. I'm going to clean it up just a little bit. And then I think what I'm going to do is let that fade into a yellow over here.
the most colorful succulent ever. <laughs> it's a succulent from the land of Oz. All right, keep going. While I'm um, just having fun with color, y'all, and literally making color up <laughs> as I go, um, let me tell you that next weekend on Local Artist Live, we have Kavaris Moore. Um, so that will be right here on Instagram from 10 to 10.30, August 8th. And Kavaris is really very talented. Um, he's an amazing artist who is from Montgomery um, and he's home right now from school. Um, he'll tell you more about that next week. So I'm really excited for him to be featured on Local Artist Live and I hope you will all tune in and show him some love and support next Saturday. Let's get some more purple in here. Angie, what kind of announcement do you want me to make since you're watching um, about the sculpture garden? I don't want to, I mean, I've brought it up, so I'm saying it, but <laughs> maybe in the comments, you can, you can say it how you want it to be said. We've got some exciting news, y'all, going on, some fun happening. Anybody watching who doesn't know, Angie is the museum director. And that is why I talk so lovingly to her and call her out like I'm doing now. So I'm still just kind of going through and getting really light washes of these colors on here. Um, kind of removing some as I go with a clean, damp brush just to continue to keep that idea of depth in there. So the fun thing about watercolors is you can play with layering a little bit, but not too much because then you just start to kind of hurt your paper. Um, so you don't want too much water, that is what I'll say. All right, let's keep moving this color around. I want that one to be, I'm gonna stick with this warmer idea right here because I got the green right here and so another complementary color pair will be red and green. So I think we'll play with that. So Angie is saying um, that we are just delighted to welcome everybody back to the museum, um, to the sculpture garden. 
Uh, that is going to be our first phase of reopening. Um, so the Cadell Sculpture Garden will be opening this week. Galleries uh, are still going to be closed. Indoor galleries will still be closed. But the restrooms, you will have access to restrooms inside if you need to. Um, but yeah, so we are so excited for Montgomery and, and beyond to start being able to come back to the museum and enjoying especially the sculpture garden. And um, we've got several new installations that need to be seen. They're so beautiful. So we want you all to all come out. And if you have never um, experienced the sculpture garden, or if it's been a long time, um, you need to come back. Like I said, we've got new installations, so there's new art out there, really, really beautiful stuff. Um, and we now have a seating area in the Bosque where it's kind of shady with trees right next to the reflection pool. And it's just the perfect place um, for a picnic, or just to relax with a book. Um, the sound of the cicadas is not quite so strong there, <laughs> so you can actually think. <laughs> um, I think I want more yellow in here. I like this yellow next to it. So the idea will be, y'all, if you come to enjoy the sculpture garden, you will enter through those beautiful sculpture garden gates. That will be the, the new entrance. Angie is having a conversation in the comments about personal to political, which is an absolutely gorgeous and very special exhibition that we just had up that unfortunately did not get to see um, the public, or the public did not get to, get to see it since we have been closed um, due to COVID-19. So. But we did get to do some programming with it, some virtual programming. And if you didn't catch those recordings and those talks, those creative conversations, definitely want to do that. Now, Angie, <laughs> I'm just caught up painting and I'm following Angie and Milton's conversation in the comments. Um, for those of you who don't know, if you don't know, Milton is a local artist um, and he's also amazing. 
has recently been featured on Local Artist Live. And she took part in our artist and activism conversation back in June. And he also um, was part of our creative conversations um, revolving around the personal to political exhibition and art. Um, and now Angie is talking about the exhibition that is currently going up, or I guess has gone up over the, over the weekend. I know it started to go up last week. Um, the um, a boucle exhibition and it is gorgeous beadwork these women out of um, South Africa am I shaking the table too much y'all is that making y'all sick I just realized when I looked over at the camera that I guess I'm moving the table when I'm painting I hope not Yay, Brandy McDermott is here. Brandy, are you are y'all in Alexandria? Tell me where you are. I'm so happy you're here. I miss you so much. Even though we hadn't been like seeing each other in person lately, I still miss you. Just knowing you're not in Montgomery makes me sad. y'all got a house congratulations that's wonderful if you are someone who's watching who I don't know personally I would love to talk to you too <laughs> so it's not always just me talking to people and making anybody feel left out I never want anybody to feel left out so please say something in the comments if you would like to join our conversation. We'd love you to be a part of it. water. Let's take some back. Thank you, Brandy. I'm having a lot of fun with the color, obviously. <laughs> I have stated earlier, this is gonna be the succulent, um, it's a succulent from the land of Oz. I don't think I'll do purple there. I'm trying to get my color right, y'all. I know you're just looking at my painting while I'm doing this, but I wanted a certain kind of purple over here. There we go. Got a thumbs up from Mike Basher. Hello. What is your favorite plant or flower? I would love to know.
let's see. Um, I think one more kind of purplish, purplish red, a red violet, if you will, is what we need right there. So that is gonna be a purple color that's got a little bit more red mixed in, leaning towards the red side. All right. And that was looking at this guy. Get my color right. Okay, so I'm drying off my brush and just kind of Letting those guys blend in the middle. We're taking them away <laughs> completely. Let's see if I can fix that. I am definitely saying this is very relaxing, Brandy. Yes. I also just splattered a little bit of paint all over the picture, but we're just gonna let that be. Don't worry about some paint splatter. I needed this this morning for sure. I hope you did too if you're watching. I hope you've enjoyed or are enjoying. We've got about um, seven minutes left. And Gonna keep it going, try to finish up in that time. I definitely enjoyed painting today. Happy to have y'all here. Hello, Lava, thank you so much. That is so kind of you. An emoji with heart eyes from Lava Thomas is I think the coolest compliment that I've ever gotten. <laughs> thank you so much. Angie, can you take a screenshot of that? <laughs> I can print it out and put it on my wall. <laughs> How has this platform supported local artists? Meaning the museum's Instagram account, social media? Um, we have actually been working on, um, we've actually created a, a program called Local Artists Live, um, where we have Montgomery artists who are featured um, every, or twice, twice a month, and they get to talk about their process and give us a little sneak peek into their studio space. Um, some do demos if they like. Really, the whole point of Local Artists Live is just to show us, show Montgomery and beyond how amazing Montgomery is, how many artists and different types of artists and different media and, um, yeah, just, just how amazing Montgomery's art scene really is. How are we supporting them monetarily? Um, I think you could ask them that. <laughs> I don't think as an employee of the museum, I'm supposed to just talk about where money goes or how we spend it. <laughs> Angie, you could take over from me babbling at any moment. Thank you, Brandy McDermott, for the screenshot of a, of a Lava Thomas compliment. Highlight of my painterly life. Hmm. Should I stick with, no, I think I'm gonna do one more really dark purple here. And then I'm gonna be pulling more yellow up there to get my warms and my cools kind of grouped together. I 
I will say, um, Stellify, that um, local artists and people we partner with are, are compensated. So I guess that's an easy way to answer the question. There is compensation. enough definition between that one and the other two right next to it so I need to fix that let's see get a good darkish blue violet in here that's better let me pick up a little bit. I got a little bit too much on there, but I really like that color. All right, getting close to being out of time, but I have enjoyed this so much, y'all. I'm so thankful for everybody tuning in. I hope you've had fun. Like I said, please tune in next weekend, same place, 10 a.m here on Instagram, Montgomery MFA, to see Kavaris Moore, who is an artist from Montgomery for Local Artist Live. He will show us some of his art and give us a little peek into his world. Hope you all have had fun. Can't wait. I would love to see some of your paintings. Um, if you have some you were painting along or if you paint more later please share them with me thank you so much for being here everybody have a wonderful weekend doing a rush to finish <laughs> but colors are fun hmm, one more I'll make that one purple too all right everybody have a great day thank you so much for being here See you next time. <laughs> there I am. Woo, too close. It's hot, but it's breezy. It was fun. See y'all later. Have a great weekend.